What's up guys? Uh, so today's video is a job that I did last week. Um, it was meant to be a power flush, but we didn't do a power flush because we had microball pipes on the system. Uh, now I've never done flushing on microball before. I've only ever done power flushing on normal systems. I've heard mixed things about not flushing uh, microball because you can make the blockages worse. So what we did instead was we took the radiators off individually, flushed them through, um, cleaned out the F&E tank um, and then basically tested everything and got everything working again. Um, it was a bit of an odd setup. Upstairs we had 15 mil pipe up to the rads, downstairs was all micro ball. Um, not sure why it's been done like that. It's probably just to cut costs on copper and materials. But if anyone's got any other advice or any other ways of flushing micro ball systems, please drop a comment below. Uh, it all helps out. We're all learning every day. Um, and yeah, enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Right, on today's job, um, I've been called out to here because there seems to be some problem with some of the radiators getting hot, some of them not. There's about five radiators in the property. They're not very large. We've got 15 mil pipes up here. And then I believe we've got micro ball downstairs. So upstairs is on 15 mil. Uh, downstairs is on micro ball. Um, before I start taking all the rads off and flushing and this, that, the other, uh, because that was the original plan to do a power flush, is I'm going to get the heating on, I'm going to get my thermal imaging camera out and I'm going to start monitoring what's getting hot and what's not. Um, notice we've got an air separator here, so I'm going to get a magnet out and check if there's any blockages there. Um, we'll probably have to go up into the loft space as well to uh, see what's going on with the F&E tank. Check the condition of the pump, make sure that's spinning properly, make sure that's strong enough as well. Uh, the boiler we're going to be dealing with is a Wiesmann's heat only boiler. Uh, not Wiesmann's, Wiesmann. Uh, so yeah, going to be seeing what's going on today and see how we get on. Right, so this is just a magnet from a system filter that I've taken out. So just checking to see if there's any blockages in the air separator, in the cold feed and vent or anything like that. All looks good. No blockages, magnets not sticking to anything. So I don't think we've got any blockages there. Um, what I did find, or what I'm finding, I think the three-port might be passing because we've only running on heating, but the hot water side seems to be getting hot as well, so that might need changing. Right now, the heating side's getting nice and hot. Boiler is not overheating. It's steadily climbing. So just going to let it run for a few minutes and get the thermal imaging camera out and have a look at which radiators are being affected. Okay, so this is the three port. So you can see we've got heat flowing both ways, but there's nothing coming out of the return on the cylinder yet. So maybe the three port isn't passing or maybe the bypass there is blocked, but we'll check that later. First thing we want to focus on today is the heating side. So up says radiators firstly. So we've got approximately 60 degrees 55 60 degrees so that's fairly even next we'll check this bathroom one so again sorry for the reflection but that's a fairly even spread of temperature across there obviously the bottom's just going to take a few more minutes because we've just turned the system on um and same again, fairly even spread. That will probably balance out at the bottom in a, in a few minutes. So that's all the upstairs. Let me just have a look at the downstairs ones. Right, so that's the hallway red. Straight away we can see there's a bit of a cold spot right in the middle there. Heat going all the way over it. So we're just going to give that a few more minutes, see if that evens out. Might be just... A case of balancing so we might just need to shut off some of the rads upstairs and then see if it pushes the heat down here but i got a feeling this rad in particular is going to need to be it's going to need to be taken off and flush particularly because we've got the micro ball down here so you can see the heat's coming up in that trunking and then we've got the one in the lounge so again we've got a bit of a cold spot there in the middle 
So again, this one's probably going to need taking off and flushing because that's another one. That's on the micro ball. So these two seem to be the problem radiators. Right, I can already see why there will be a blockage. And that's the color of the water just dripping out of there. So I'm going to drain this radiator out, take it outside, flush it, and see what the quality of the water is. There we go, that's our blockage. Liquid gold. <laughs> or black gold, we should say. I'm just taking this radiator off. You can see that is black. Black shit coming out there. So we're gonna just open the other end up um, and then we're gonna flush this through manually and just try and get it all nice and clean. Right, I've got this connected to garden hose, so let's see. Just waiting for the water to come through. There we go, look at that. Oh, I have to push this, tip it back a bit. Yeah, that radiator is filthy. flushing for quite a few minutes now um, we're getting the odd splash of black coming up but you're gonna get that it's not you're not gonna ever get these 100 clean but that's a night and day difference from where it was before there we go this is a radiator number two big one how dirty that is. We haven't even started agitating it yet. Right, so that's the F new tank half of it out just gonna wet back the rest of it out give it a clean then uh, add some inhibitor in and then fill up the system again right that's the F &E tank cleaned out as much as I can I've missed a bit there I couldn't see because there's a shadow there but now with the torch on, I'll give that a little bit more wipe down. But yeah, all that sludge that was sitting on the bottom, we did not want that to go back down there. So wiped it all through. You can see I've just gone through a whole lot of blue roll. But now we're going to add some inhibitor in and fill it up. Right, all the rads are back on. And there we go. So the upstairs ones, we didn't really have any issues with them, but we got about 65 degrees across that one. We've got, again, about 65 degrees across that one. About 65, 66 across that one. So these ones are fine. Now the main ones we want to have a look at are the downstairs ones. And already we can see there's a nice even spread across that. That cold patch in the middle is gone. So that means flushing it has definitely worked. It's a little bit cooler than the upstairs one, so what that means, we'll probably just need to balance it, so turn them down uh, upstairs a little bit to push the heat further down, because obviously we've got micro ball running downstairs. And we've got 15 mil pipe upstairs. Um, right, I'm just gonna go into the main living room, but the tenant's working there, so I may not be able to speak in there, but let's have a look at the, the big one in there. All right, that one, again, normal cold spots. 
50 degrees across the top. We've got heat, a nice even spread across it. So obviously, like I said, it's a bit cooler than the upstairs one. So we're just gonna do a bit of balancing to try and get this a little bit hotter downstairs. But yeah, flushing it has definitely worked. And you saw how much crap was in that system. f &E tanks all nice and clean now. So yeah, we are all good to go. Right, problem number two we've got is three port is passing. Right now we've got it for hot water only. Got the Tesla temperature clamps. I'll put the screenshot up afterwards, but we've got heat going down the heating side, even with the three port in just a hot water position. So we've got heat going down there anyway, but we've also got a lot of heat passing down to the heating side. So we're gonna change the three port over as well. Right, so initially I thought I could try and change the guts, but it's got different guts to the Honeywell. You can see why that was passing. That's all clogged up in there and inside there. So we're just gonna have to change the whole body. I was gonna try and just do the guts because I don't think there's a lot of movement there, but I haven't really got much choice now. So yeah, let's crack on. three ports on luckily we had a bit of movement i thought we wouldn't but that was tight but we had some movement there that's the old one so you can see why that was letting by now it's just full of crap inside and still the old water just gonna go take the bungs out and then uh, we'll test the system and we should all be good but new three ports changed we're only running hot water at the moment and We've got a bit of residual heat because obviously there's a lot of heat transfer coming from here, but that's sitting at about 35 degrees. Got 50 plus degrees on that side. So that's not passing anymore. I'll put the screenshot up again in a minute. Um, obviously it's going to be continuously changing. So, but yeah, that is warm to touch because it's so close. But that, oh fuck, can't put my hand on it. That's roasting. Job done. <laughs> 